out, guys. Um, I'm going to try to do more videos because it was suggested to us that we should do not so much editing if we can get more content up. You know, more videos rather than better videos, I guess. So we'll try to, you know, obviously still do edit videos as well, but try to do more just walkthrough updates um, so you guys can get more content rather than just seeing an update every week or every couple weeks or whatever. Try to get like a couple in every week. But anyway, so we'll just start here real quick uh, with what we're going to be feeding this run. Um, this is Dominion Organics Microchip. This is their silica, so we're using this silica. This is their bricks booster. This is basically just like a kelp humic acid. You guys can see there. It's a whole bunch of mixes of good stuff. Um, obviously it does what it says, boosts the bricks level of your plants. Uh, but this is a really nice additive. Um, so we will be using these two. Uh, right now um, I do rotate between them in tank mixes. So one tank will get silica, the next tank will get brick booster. <coughs> so. Those two additives. We also got for our base, well I guess we start our base is Veg Bloom, the HD formula. Okay, so that's our base. We've got the silica and the Bricks Booster additives you guys saw. We also have B29. Um, this is from Dominion Organics as well. This is like the advanced B52 stuff. Uh, I don't know that we're gonna use this yet. Um, this might just be for veg. I don't know if we'll use that in flour. We'll see. Uh, we have their cow mag. They have a super clean cow mag and it's all organic. It's really nice. So we're using their cow mag and we're also using their cow mag force. This will be used later in flour. Uh, this has no nitrogen in it. It's just calcium magnesium supplement. Uh, unlike, you know, most cow mags have a little bit of nitrogen in them. Uh, this one does not. So this is nice for flour. Um, so we will switch to that during flour. We use their root inoculant, root rocket. This is awesome stuff. The clones you saw last time with all those roots, this is all we used. Nothing else. Uh, Budweiser, which is pretty awesome. Um, it's, it just really creates a really nice swell. Used it basically in, I think, week three and week five. Um, we'll talk more about it when we get to that point. And that's just the more cow mag. Uh, we also have Big Bud from Advanced Nutrients. So this will be used in flour. And then, I need a cap on that. And then it's, uh, for our enzyme, we got Sense Design from Advanced. Uh, this, is a, this is like a great, just standard enzyme. It's not too expensive. We have a bunch of it, so that's why we're using it. I don't know if this would be our go-to going forward, but while we have it, we'll be using it. So as you can see, this HD formula is a synthetic organic mix. Um, the advanced stuff is obviously synthetic, but everything else is all organic. So for the majority, of our lineup, it's pretty much all organic, <clears throat> except for those advanced additives, which you know we'll probably play with uh, removing and adding stuff going forward, depending on how the run looks. So that's it. Um, our pH right now is pH in the water. Is uh, nothing. Five point seven. I might stop messing with it. 5.8 would be nice, but it'll probably climb up there over the next day, so we'll leave it at 5.7, our PPM. About 5.21. So they just got hit with 750, almost 800 PPM last tank. Uh, so we're, this, one, this tank is just going to be a little dumped down. There's a lot of enzymes in this tank. Um, it'll be a little lighter feeding. So basically what happened, we can talk about it real quick before we go in there, but um, this reclaim water that we've been collecting, we talked about this a little bit on a live stream recently with Grow Mouse, but uh, it actually is slowly starting to build up metals um, because of the water running over the coils and the humidifiers and all that, or dehumidifiers. So uh, what's happening is there's only, you know, started at zero, but it's over time now. We're about like five to six PPM in this, in this runoff here from the dehumidifiers. And the problem is it's not, obviously that's not a lot, but it, it's a concentrated amount of just metal. So mostly copper, obviously, but there's some other metals in there. Um, and the issue is if we keep mixing this water in over time, you know, your plants need like one PPM of copper, right? It's a trace mineral element, whatever. Um, they don't need a lot of it. 
So over time though, if you keep using this water, that five, six PPM of copper and other metals is just gonna start stacking, 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 and then you're gonna end up with this huge metal toxicity. So we noticed the plants were having issues, did some more research, figured that out. There's a filtering system that Hydrolog makes for this. We will be getting that and installing that because we are reclaiming a lot of water. This tank, we're at over 150 gallons right now and I just emptied it like two days ago. So um, it definitely gets a, I don't know, pump just kicked on there. Definitely gets a decent amount of water in here. So we have a filter that we'll get to reclaim all this. Uh, until we get that, we'll just be using our RO water right now. Um, but yeah, that's what happened there. So basically the point of that story was we flushed the plants just in case, because they were looking, they were starting to look a little funky. We didn't want to risk, a copper toxicity could kill your plants real fast if it gets bad. So we didn't want to risk that happening. Um, so yeah, we basically flushed them, started them with a little like light top feeding after we flushed them, like the next day. They're still pretty wet, obviously. So just a little bit of food on top of there. Um, you know, they did show deficiencies going after that uh, flush, but we tried to m mitigate it by putting a little bit of feed in there. And so we slowly just kind of worked them back up to 750 and we're gonna hit them with a little light feed, probably dumb this down even a little more for next feeding and then back up to a full like 800 PPM feeding. All right, let's go take a look. All right, guys, uh, I turned off most of the fans, so hopefully it's not as loud in here. Left the ones on under the AC. I don't want it to get too warm. Um, and we'll try to make this as quick as possible. So right now, this is everything reset. Um, this room was cleaned. Uh, we bombed it. Uh, we did a pyrethium bomb, like a bug bomb in here, bleached everything, all that good stuff. Um, so pretty much clean top to bottom. Uh, you know, and, and that's why you notice some of the covers, like we try to keep the covers, I need to get one on that fan back there, but we try to keep the covers on the fans who are, that are at head level so they don't jack us too hard. Uh, but everything else doesn't have covers on it just because it's, you know, when you start multiplying it by more than a few, uh, that's a lot more parts you have to clean for every fan and it's just a pain in the ass. So that's why that's like that. Um, so yeah, everything looks good in here. We've reset it kind of how we want to do our first baseline run. So. 60 per a table, uh, they're in rows of three, and uh, yeah, we'll have, I still need to get some time to do the watering system, but we have most of everything to do it, so I just need to get PVC in here and run on all the lines and everything. Uh, I'm not sure, we might do the same PVC thing to get the trellis out on these other tables, we might do something different. Um, eventually we'll just get the things that clip on and we can just, the GGS cells, I'm sure. Um, if this doesn't work out too well, uh, but yeah, everything looks pretty good. You know, you can tell some are kind of bouncing back, you know, from their flush. Tell a little light there, but all the new growth looks good. Um, so they just got watered with that with that feeding yesterday. And you can definitely tell this row is all uh, cookie berry crunch. And they're pretty, uh, pretty damn uniform right now. They look really good. They've been working her ass off cleaning all these up. So uh, cookie berry crunch. Here we have some Fam OG um, orange cookies. Let's go take a look. And by the way, I think someone asked, but all these tables move, so we can walk down any row we want to. And we get extra space on the sides, of course, if they're all moved over. Uh, enough to fit a shot back down there, which is what matters. Um, well, let's go down this road. So yeah, orange cookies. This is kind of a random, like, this table has a few more plants than the other table um, right here, because these were all smaller, a little beat up. So, um, short bus plants, I guess. So there's some like cookie bear crunch, orange cookies, everything right there. Uh, this is all Kim Didi, all the way back. Um, this, you can tell the OGs really didn't, they're so fucking finicky. They really didn't like getting flushed and messed with them. Probably had a little problem with that toxicity, but they'll be okay. They'll be fine. So anyways, this is all uh, Fam OG. And then I believe Scott's OG down here. Yeah. And then this is all Scott's OG. And these last two.
So, um, we got some more Scott Spam OG here, random stuff. Uh, some more Cookie Berry Crunch right here. This is orange cookies, orange cookies, orange cookies, strawberry fields. I want to see strawberry, uh, where's the, let's see here. <laughs> the stacking on strawberry fields is so, so ridiculous. Great growing plant though. Anyway, strawberry fields. Um, Gorilla Glue number four. We just have a few of these. I don't know why we ended up with so little Gorilla Glue. We need to ramp that back up, which is what we did. We got a lot more cuts of that now. Um, Forum Cut Girl Scout cookies. Cheddarwurst back here and up. And then about there up is Washington Apple. Um, I mean, you can just see the new growth is really, they're bouncing back. Uh, you can tell. See the little deficiencies there. But yeah, they're gonna be fine. So we need to get the, uh, the trellis net on here. Uh, we're done spraying. Uh, we used method one to, to spray everything. So make a video talking about that. Um, it's a great product though. And, and once you understand how it works, it's really, it works, you know, you definitely can work in your favor. It's awesome. So um, this form cut was awesome. Form cut and the OGs were definitely the ones that were most upset during that little uh, realization of the toxicity and flushing and everything. But like Cookie Berry Crunch, you know, the more sativa leaning ones, like really didn't even care that much. So anyways, um, yeah, I think that's mostly it. Everything's been pretty good in here. Temperature, our high is 83 degrees. Our low is about 75. Um, our humidity high is about 75. Low is about 45. So it does get a little low during the day, but the plants are getting bigger. So as they progress in size, that'll start to, to level out a little bit. Um, and yeah, we basically have the mini splits. Uh, a couple, I think three of them are set to automatic. Uh, the other ones are all set to just cooling. So that way, because sometimes you'll notice they'll like fight with each other. Like that one was just blowing hot air for some fucking reason. Like it's hot as shit in here. And it's just blasting hot air. So. For whatever, I don't know, they're kind of annoying. You just gotta figure them out, dial it in, I guess. But, uh, so a few of them are set to automatic, so the heater will run at night if it gets too cool in here. Uh, but the rest are all set to AC. And yeah, they're killing it. They're having no problems. I need two more Gavita control cords to hook up those last couple of lights. Uh, you can see we got some spots in the canopy. You know, so we'll see. Uh, curious to see how how the plants perform under there if they really notice a difference. I mean, it's totally dark where those cookie berry crunches are and they all seem to be the same height still. And there's two lights that are off right above the end of that cookie berry crunch table. So they're getting, you know, side light right next to it, of course, but I mean, the throw in these Gavitas is pretty sick. So I really think we could get away with using less lights. Um, but you know, also bud production could be hurt and it's just veg is fine without the light, so. We'll see. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, we got to get the trellis net, all that stuff, and try to get you an update once we get that done. Oh, CO2. Uh, we run 1275, about 1500 uh, is what it ranges from during the day. The room's sealed. We don't dump the air anymore at night. Uh, it just costs us a lot more money to refill the, uh, to do that. Like, as far as the CO2 has to refill the entire room, whereas the plants create a bunch of CO2 at night. Um, it would just be sitting in here, ready to go, and the tank wouldn't have to work as hard when the lights come back on. Um, so we stop dumping it every night. Whenever the tank gets switched, though, I do dump the air. So we do still swap the air probably once a week. I did time it. That 50-pound tank lasts a week in here. So with the room sealed and no, no, uh, no air coming in or out at any point in time. Um, and so, and the, you know, the mini splits we circulate air in the room. They don't pull any air out. So. A week, it's not bad for a 50 pound tank for the size of this room. I kind of was thinking it was gonna be like three or four days, so a week is good by me. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let us know and we'll try to, you know, get more updates. They'll just be this style, which I don't really like watching, but if you guys don't mind, you know, we'll definitely do more of them. All right, talk to y'all later. Peace.